Homage to the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha Today I'd like to look at the Dhammapada verse number 174, Pesakara Vatu. And in Pali it goes, Andabuto ayang loko tanuketa vipasati, sakuno jalamutava apo sagaya gachati. In English, the translation in this case is, Blind are the people of this world. Only a few in this world see clearly. Just as only a few birds escape from the net, so also only a few get to the world of the devas. Now this is a story of the weaver girl. And it says that while residing at the monastery near Agavala shrine in the country of Alavi, the Buddha uttered that particular verse with reference to a young maiden who was a weaver. At the conclusion of an almsgiving ceremony in Alavi, the Buddha gave a discourse on the impermanence of the aggregates, the khandhas. The main points the Buddha stressed on that day may be expressed as follows. My life is impermanent. For me, death is only permanent. I must certainly die. My life ends in death. Life is not permanent. Death is permanent. The Buddha also exhorted the audience to always be mindful and to strive to perceive the true nature of the aggregate. He also said, as one who is armed with a stick or a spear is prepared to meet an enemy, such as a poisonous snake, so also one who is ever mindful of death will face death mindfully. He would then leave this body for a good destination, Sugati. Many people did not take the above exhortation seriously, but a young girl of 16 who was a weaver clearly understood the message. After giving the discourse, the Buddha returned to the Jetavana monastery. After a lapse of three years, when the Buddha surveyed the world, he saw the young weaver in his vision and knew that time was ripe for the girl to attain Sotapati fruition. So the Buddha came to the country of Alavi to expound the Dhamma for the second time. When the girl heard that the Buddha had come again with 500 bhikkhus, she wanted to go and listen to the discourse, which would be given by the Buddha. However, her father had also asked her to wind some thread pools, which he needed urgently. So she promptly wound some spools and took them to her father. On the way to her father, she stopped for a moment at the outer fringe of the audience, who had come to listen to the Buddha. Meanwhile, the Buddha knew that the young weaver would come to listen to this discourse. He also knew that the girl would die when she got to the weaving shed. Therefore, it was very important that she should listen to the Dhamma on the way to the weaving shed and not on her return. So when the young weaver appeared on the fringe of the audience, the Buddha looked at her when she saw him looking at her, she dropped her basket and respectfully approached the Buddha. Then he put four questions to her and she answered all of them. The questions and answers are given below. The first one, where have you come from? And the answer, I do not know. Two, where are you going? And the answer, I do not know. Three, don't you know? The answer, yes, I do know. Four, do you know? And four, the answer was, I do not know, Venerable Sir. Hearing her answers, the audience thought that the young weaver was very disrespectful. Then the Buddha asked her to explain what she meant by her answers, and she explained. Venerable Sir, since you know that I have come from my house, I interpreted that by your first question. You meant to ask me from what past existence I have come here. Hence my answer, I do not know. The second question means, to what future existence I would be going from here. Hence my answer, I do not know. And the third question means whether I do not know that I would die one day. Hence my answer, yes I do know. And the last question means whether I know when I would die. Hence my answer, I do not know. The Buddha was satisfied with her explanation, and he said to the audience, Most of you might not understand clearly the meaning of the answers given by the young weaver. 
Those who are ignorant are in darkness. They are just like the blind. And so the Buddha then spoke the verse. Blind are the people of this world. Only a few in this world see clearly with insight. Just as only a few birds escape from the net, so also only a few get to the world of the devas and nibbana. At the end of the discourse, the young weaver attained Sotapati fruition, so she became a stream enterer. Then she continued on her way to the weaving shed. When she got there, her father was asleep on the weaver's seat. As he woke suddenly, he accidentally pulled the shuttle, and the point of the shuttle struck the girl at her breast. She died on the spot, and her father was heartbroken. The eyes full of tears, he went to the Buddha and asked the Buddha to admit him to the order of the bhikkhus. So he became a bhikkhu not long afterwards and attained arahantship. There are a few things to take away from this verse of the Buddha and the story behind it. It's very moving. And also to see that someone of such a, an age, only at that time probably 19 years of age, and very dutiful towards her father, and at the same time very respectful of the Buddha, having heard that first instance many years ago when she was 16, and looks like she had taken refuge in the Buddha, and therefore in the second teaching when the Buddha had foreseen that uh, she was ready, and also that she had the impending death, that when he gave her a precise teaching through four questions, her answers were very, very spot on. And at that point, hearing that she entered the stream, uh, received the eye of the Dhamma, was very prompt and very fortuitous in many ways. And as a reflection, I think this is probably one of the most powerful, whether we are young or old, because the Buddha is talking about things that we are blind to, that we are blind from moment to moment in our day, in our daily lives, and we go about our business, go about our, go about our duties and responsibilities without this mind to knowing that at any moment that we could die. And it's very confronting. And maybe in this current world climate where we stand at the moment, we still don't contemplate it in that way. And so if you go through the actual four questions of the Buddha, they can be very helpful as a prompt in meditation. The question, where have you come from? And knowing that that question is past existence, it relates to karma. And unless we meditate and have that insight into past lives, then the answer really is, I do not know. And the second question of, where are you going? And that's the thing. It's very dependent on our karma as well. What are our actions? We don't know the sum total and balance of our past actions because they don't all come to fruition uh, immediately. And so the answer is again, we do not know where we are going. And uh, the reason why we practice is to ensure that we go towards a good destination based on our actions in total, given that we are the heirs of all of our actions, whether it's through body, through speech, and through mind. And so then the third question is, don't you know? And it seems slightly obscure because it's difficult to understand, but clearly the weaver girl was following the thread of the Buddha's questioning. And so that third question is whether you know what, that you will die one day. And the truth is that we will all die, and we, but we just don't know when. And so the third question is saying, yes, with very much certainty that we know we will die, that death is a certainty. And then the fourth question is, do you know? So it's asking that question again, and how she received it was that, uh, the when part of the question, when will you die? And the answer is, you do not know. That fourth one is equally powerful because we don't know when we will die. And we might have some kind of vanity that it will be when we are old. 
But as in this story, this weaver girl, she died at the age of 19. And in our world, we do know that people die as babies, people die as young people, people die in the midst of their, their life with the idea that they have many more years to go. And then of course we die when we are old. But there is no certainty of when we will die. You know, this breath might be the last breath. Today might be the last day. Or it could be 5, 10, 20 more years. We, don't, we just don't know. And so when Buddha goes on to say to the crowd that not everyone will understand the meaning of the answers given by the weaver girl, it is actually the avijja, the ignorance, and also the delusion, the moha, that covers and makes us blind. And so that's why when you think about the Buddha's uh, five frequent recollections, they can be very powerful in terms of cutting through that kind of fog that kind of darkness and what is covered. So I find this particular short gatha that is found in the Dhammapada particularly useful, particularly poignant and particularly penetrative if we contemplate it correctly. And it's a very good one also to share with young people in a gentle way because Quite often, uh, when you're young, you get conditioned to think you have your whole life ahead of you. And so you strive very hard for education. You strive very hard for work. You strive very hard to do the social expectation, uh, coming together, finding a partner, having a family, and all those good things. However, we're not really taught early on that these, these things are actually almost secondary to knowing the truth. And I think the current environment in the world is very much pointing to the instability in, in the way we are thinking that we cannot rest on good health, we cannot rest on not dying, and we can't rest on even the aging process. And so I thought this was a very short teaching of the Buddha that is very useful for us to actually just take into our minds, contemplate it, meditate on it, go deeper into it, particularly the four questions and the answers and very timely kind of teaching as well. So offer this today as something to contemplate and sharing all the merit with all sentient beings. May all beings be happy. May all beings be well, may all beings find the right view and practice the Dhamma according to the Buddha's teachings and wishing you all the blessings of the Triple Gem. May you all be well. Theravan Saranai.